if you use an ETL tool like Matillion or like Data Stage or Informatica or any of the other uh, quality ETL tools, you're putting your business logic into those tools. You're embedding your, your knowledge of the data inside of those tools. And all we seek to explain with number eight is that that code, that body of knowledge has value. This is lineage. This is the things you want to govern. These are your business rules. This is your glossary. These are a lot of the things that those tools traditionally don't cover. And so with number eight, we're pointing to the fact that there has to be a life cycle, uh, life cycle management process that runs around your code uh, generation, code management. And another thing with code generation tools, when, we, when we're using code generation tools, uh, and when we talk about the data pipelines and complexity and removing that complexity, um, part of that complexity is maintaining that and going back and, and seeing, you know, some code that somebody else wrote and, you know, we had five developers that were working on writing the code for, for the, uh, you know, our ETL pipeline and, and then we're going to go back and try and maintain that and manage that. And, you know, Jared wrote it one way and Rich wrote it a different way and trying to, to manage all of that. It adds layers of complexity. It adds, uh, you know, confusion. And when we, when we can, Use models and tools to to uh, to make it so that the code is 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 governed. It's it's uh, you know it's very similar. It makes it much easier to maintain that code. Again, another place that we can remove some of that complexity. And and basically, what we can do is we can kind of teach the code generation tools. These are the models that we want to use. This is how we want to build our merge statements in Snowflake so that we're not doing blind updates and that we're doing that we're we're building these merge statements properly and then we can allow that to go and generate those so they're they're all conforming to each other yeah that piece is really important because we realize that it will not be a single individual that ultimately will own all of that code base there may be many but wouldn't it be nice if we can beyond just enforcing naming standards, we also enforce the way we write the code. It makes it more readable, it makes it more manageable, and mm -hmm. ultimately code generation is about protecting you from having to do migrations. It's all about how do I build today, how do I capture the logic, the metadata, but not necessarily the implementation. So if you wrote the code for let's say, uh, COBOL yesterday, but now you want to run that code on AWS, you, you, you won't have to rewrite that code because the logic is the same. It's the implementation that's going to change. Yeah, and, and, and as I was going through this this deck, I said, well, what, what's our main message with this? And he says, <laughs> we, we were talking, he goes, we don't want people to write complex data pipelines. That's what it is. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You're avoiding the nasty, nasty data pipelines by segregating the the elements well enough that that uh, you have reusable reusable pieces uh, that could be used and reused. Hey, folks! Thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show click on the link in the video description. Also, check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.